obviously I think the biggest topic for me has been the Diddy lawsuit. It's the craziest thing that's come out, I think, since Jeffrey Epstein. And it's definitely significant because a lot of the work that I do is talking about just, or I guess really asking the question is what's happened to black culture? Because this is not the black culture that I grew up with. And mm-hmm. the Diddy lawsuit potentially answers a lot of those questions. Allegedly, 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 just for protection here, mm-hmm. um, is that there's a black male ring in Hollywood. Diddy is a gangster on top of Diddy sits um, Lucian Grange, who is the CEO of Universal Music Group. This was, for me, one of the wildest parts. He tells a story about one night where Diddy got mad at somebody and just shot them in like the stomach and the hip. He shows the pictures of the blood all around the bathroom because he was right there when the person got shot and he allegedly went to his knees and tried to help the person. It was Diddy and his son who allegedly shot him. But they said that there's one person that you call when something like that happens. And that guy's name is like Fahim something. And he will come clean it up. The LAPD will write a fake police report. And he shows like how the news then reported that the shooting happened outside. And then it got wiped under the rug. And what's interesting is that guy who you call, the security guy, was the same security person who was one of only two people there when Michael Jackson died. So it's now reopened. All the Michael Jackson stuff. Candace might be on to something. Oh yeah, Didi got a podcast. Man, welcome back to another episode of the Ruling Class Podcast or Didi got a podcast. And of course, I'm your host, Didi Backup in this, which with another video. Listen, if you are new to the show, we please ask that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, follow me on all the socials. I will really, really appreciate it. But if you don't do anything else, hit the like button because it really promotes my video out there to other people. On this channel, it's no secret that I've talked I talk about black culture quite a bit. I don't think that's gonna change ever. Um, because I see what's happening in our culture or lack of a culture that we have and I'm concerned and I've been concerned for years and I've religiously talked about it. Well, Candace Owens has been theorizing the past few days about some of the reasons and some of the things that's contributing to the downfall of black culture. And I think this is probably the most powerful thing I've heard in a very long time, the connections that she's been able to create. And she went on to this guy by the name of Destiny. She went on to his show um, to talk a little bit about the connections between all the Diddy allegations, the connections to Michael Jackson's death, and those connections to the degeneracy that you see in black culture. Obviously, I think the biggest topic for me has been the Diddy lawsuit. It's the craziest thing that's come out, I think, since Jeffrey Epstein. And it's definitely significant because a lot of the work that I do is talking about just, or I guess really asking the question is what's happened to black culture? Because this is not the black culture that I grew up with. And mm-hmm. the Diddy lawsuit potentially answers a lot of those questions. So so essentially, at the end of last year, Diddy was dating that girl Cassie for a long time, about 10 years. Okay. And she started making allegations that Diddy was very, you know, very into into some very sexually deviant things that I would say. Okay. Um, and forced her to do a lot of things against her will. There were drugs, whatever. She files this lawsuit, and basically overnight, I'm obviously being a bit hyperbolic, but uh-huh. he pays her off, so it ends. And then Cat Williams kind of ele- like makes alludes to the fact that more stuff is going to come out in 2024, and then a producer whose name is Rodney, drops Uh a lawsuit, and he alleges to have, you know, hundreds of hours of footage backing up his claims, and in the lawsuit, he actually dropped pictures. So it wasn't just this, because you can always have a frivolous lawsuit. It can mean nothing. Uh And what essentially his lawsuit suggests, allegedly, 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 just for protection here, Uh um, is that there's a blackmail ring in Hollywood. Diddy is a gangster on top of Diddy sits... Um, Lucian Grange, who is the CEO of Universal Music Group, that, and this was for me one of the wildest parts, he tells a story about one night where Diddy got mad at somebody and just shot them in like the stomach and the hip. He shows the pictures of the blood all around the bathroom because he was right there when the person got shot and he allegedly went to his knees and tried to help the person. It was Diddy and his son who allegedly shot him. But they said that there's one person that you call when something like that happens. And that guy's name is like Fahim something. And he will come clean it up. The LAPD will write a fake police report. And he shows like how the news then reported that the shooting happened outside. And then it got wiped under the rug. And what's interesting is that guy who you call, the security guy, was the same security person who was one of only two people there when Michael Jackson died. 
so it's now reopened all the michael jackson stuff uh super interesting a lot of stuff that i would say a lot of proof presented in these documents like i said there's a lot of photos included and if what he is spelling out is correct then it's basically a homosexual ring that works by black males they host these what he calls freak offs and they drug people and they get them to sleep with a minor or do something you know that you wouldn't want publicized and then they own you right because it's like well we have you on camera doing this and so you're going to say or do whatever i want so very much like the jeffrey epstein stuff Gotcha. Are these in indictments or are these just like affidavits or statements to the media? Is any of this stuff like gone to court yet? Or? It's the lawsuit that he filed. So we're reading the lawsuit okay. documents okay. directly. Is this, this is a civil lawsuit, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. He's suing Universal Music Group. He's suing Lucy and Grange, per, uh, you know, personally. Um, he alleges that Lucy and Grange and Diddy are in a relationship by saying that like they disappear into Diddy's room uh-huh. and for hours and like this is the stuff that I've seen I was groomed for sex like essentially he wasn't a gay man but then Diddy found him when he was young these are the allegations he's making again a lot of photos like of other rappers he's list named uh, like Cuba Gooding Jr. who's a, uh, an uh, actor, actor yeah it's a lot. Is you know? there, um, has any of this stuff like leaked to the media in terms of like pictures or strong hard evidence or are these mainly just in the charging documents or the civil S- case documents so far? That's also what's really interesting is that, the, yes, it's being covered, but not in the way that it should be covered. The fact that you don't know about it to me is crazy because we've never seen someone that with hundreds of hours of footage and putting in photos like here's a picture of a drugs that i have to carry at all times to keep diddy high here's mm-hmm. the name of the woman that gets the drugs here's a drug dealer here's a photo of me with this person here's the blood on the floor that night it's like we've never seen this much proof to make those claims mm-hmm. so it's definitely something to watch very beautifully said but even more so to take it a step further i believe that if you don't follow god as human beings as a human race we're going to find something else but more than likely someone else to follow if we're not raised to follow god right and i think more times than not especially in these disenfranchised communities right if you don't follow God, the people that you're going to follow is who the elites, right? The people in power, the powers that be, you're going to follow the people that they put in front of you as leaders, right? We don't have a Martin Luther King. We don't have a Malcolm X. We don't have those people anymore, right? James Baldwin. We don't have these people. So who, who you, we're going to follow are artists and people keep saying it's only music. No, it's not. These people are considered idols, role models, and people aspire to be like them, Right? So one of the biggest pet peeves I have is when you try to explain this to people, especially white liberals in in particular. Not all, not all, not all. Not all, not all, not all, but most. But a lot of them. When you try to explain it to them, how they try to tell you and sympathize as to why what you're saying is wrong and how they better understand than you do when you actually come from the community. I think um, you made a mention that this might be an indicator to things that have happened with black culture. What do you you mean by that, I guess? So there has been just a very obvious corrosion in black culture like the music that i grew up in i was listening to the temptations lauren hill like it was all about like family love it was real talent and then something just really shifted and it all became about derogatory debased gangster rap and it's the change that i've noted in a lot of my commentary and you know i think other people have like i asked the question there's there's a really in my view disgusting artist just in terms of the stuff that she publishes and the photos that she publishes, named Sexy Red, who they're now making a thing, right? Who makes the decision to sign a Sexy Red? You're telling me you have all the money and all the talent at your fingertips, and you sign a woman who, at her baby shower, uh, nine months pregnant, however pregnant she was, was twerking and had her butt cheeks in, like somebody's face was inside of her butt cheeks. That, to me, is very intentional, because you're not... Yes, it's intentional. But to take it a step further, you have to know, think about it, just common sense. You have all the talent in the world. A lot of you, not just me, a lot of you out there know talented people in your communities that have real skill, can really sing, can really rap, are true poets. People like Sexy Red, though, are the ones that's going viral. People like Sexy Red are the people that's on the biggest stage in the world. And they all have the same thing in common. You mean Nicki Minaj... Lil' Kim, Cardi B, Sexy Red, Pumpkin Spice, or whatever her name is, bro. All these people got the same thing in common. Half-naked, twerking, degeneracy, effing dudes, Meg Meg Thee Stallion, all of them. Ain't none of them different and popping? Ain't nobody following God and popping? Get out of here. 
That's intentional. So you're not signing her based on talent. You're not just signing her based on following. You're signing her because it's filth. And you're perpetuating this filth into my community. So I, yeah, I've just, it's just something that I've noticed, something that I talk about often that are, we're intentionally being sold crack, it feels like. You know? um, it feels like when I, when I look at music or if I look at music that um, people create, oftentimes the music is a reflection of their circumstances. And you can see, uh, especially as America and, and the black communities became more conscientious maybe of the ghettos that they'd been kind of pushed into or the policing situations that they'd had to be a part of or drugs destroying their communities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then those people turning to crime that you also see the music and the art kind of reflect those conditions. And then those pieces of art that get, that get created, especially the music, end up being like worldwide popular. Like the most popular genre of music in the, in the world is like hip hop and rap. So when I, when I look at people pushing certain stuff today, I'm like, okay, well, um, we got two really big, in my opinion, uh, I went to school for music, I don't know if you thought about the saxophone or whatever. So we had two really big contributions to the world of music from America. One was jazz um, mm -hmm. that came basically from the black community. And then the second was like rap and hip hop. Um, these forms of music become popular. People see that it's popular. They want to get involved. Obviously, the money men, the people on top, they want to kind of continue to push this because it's popular and everybody around the world consumes it. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are a lot of market forces at work that kind of perpetuate this and keep this happening. And that feels pretty satisfying to me to explain what's going on. So when we ask like, why is it a woman uh, twerking with somebody's face and her butt cheeks? Because well, for whatever reason, that's like what the worldwide culture seems to want to see right no. now. And then on the other side, um, it feels like from people, I don't want to just say conservatives, but I would say broadly speaking, um, I guess I'll say on your side in general, it feels like there's this idea that there's this much more intentional or like malevolent force yes. working behind the scenes. Yes, there so this is before Candace even goes, let, let, let me just say this is a big problem that I have with a lot of white liberals, not all of them, but a lot of non, non black liberals, especially because they want to help. They want to contribute. But it reminds me a lot of what Michael Mack said many years ago. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is, almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling and taking for a friend. And that, that quote right there about how white liberals can be sometimes the most dangerous is true because one, a lot of time, a lot of white liberals do care about black people, but you have a much larger population of them that do not. And they're really a part of the movement because they, they, they want to better things for poor white people. They're really a part of the movement because they want to better things for women, right? And what they've done nowadays is they place diversity, equity, and inclusion. So they put all these fights into one bucket when they're different fights, right? They're, they're, they're completely different worlds. And so I, I don't even agree with that because you got people standing beside each other that aren't even fighting for the same causes. They don't even care about the cause right next to them. He's a prime example. If you don't know who Destiny is, Destiny is a, a, a self-proclaimed far leftist. And I am under the belief that you cannot be a far leftist and also believe in God. And I would even argue that you can't be a far on the far right and believe in God. Right. I think you have to have a little bit more. It's not even about being right or left. Right. Because the Bible don't don't subscribe to either one of those things. But with that being said, he is also a self-proclaimed atheist. Well, right. I don't know if he uses that language, but he doesn't believe in God. This is a person on his podcast, very popular guy who promotes degeneracy, tells people that they can do what they want wear what they want, say what they want, do what they want, and there's no consequences, right? Because there's no God, there's no afterlife. You don't have to worry about consequences. There's free will, do what thou wilt, like Alistair Crowley teaches. Essentially, what this man promotes on his channel, which is part of the reason why Candace Owens is here, because she wants to give him some pushback because of that. I want to set that foundation to say, people like, you have to understand, people like this that you're looking at is a person that's not operating from a foundation of God. He's trying to tell her the age old argument. People argue and, 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 and people promoting their music, what their what their community, what, what their surroundings is. No, they don't. They're lying. You're lying. You have a small percentage of people that actually do that. J. Cole is from poverty. Kendrick Lamar is from poverty. I would argue that they also promote de degeneracy on a much smaller level, but they don't, for the most part, promote those things, bro. It's by it's by choice. It's, it's these people being put in position by the elites because they know they're going to promote degeneracy. This is all orchestrated. 
If you're from these communities, you don't have to promote drug culture, bro. You can just talk about the circumstances there. But you're seeing people promote it. You're from these communities where you're seeing people prostituting things of that sort. Cardi B, you don't have to go on an interview and talk about how you drug men to get... Like, what are we talking about? These people are placed there. And it's, 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 it's obvious to me that they're placed there. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to push back on what you're suggesting here. You're suggesting that this is uh, this reflects the community and this, they're, they're sharing their stories in a way that makes sense. That's completely not true. Okay, WAP does not reflect the circumstances that black people are living in, you know, singing about your vagina and how hard it's getting pounded is not the circumstance of living in the hood. I come from nothing. It's not that, that did not make me feel closer to the circumstances that I grew up in. And unfortunately, that's actually what people are telling black Americans. Like, actually, it's working the other way. You're putting something, you know, your eyes and your ears are the windows to the soul. And you're basically, when you celebrate someone, and I'm using Cardi B here as an example because I think people are probably more familiar with her than they are with Sexy Red. Uh -huh. uh, when you put someone like that on the Grammys stage, which is again a decision being made. There's when I was growing up, the best, most talented people were on the Grammy stage. It was something you could watch with your family. Mm -hmm. And we still had poor people. Kind you of still had a yeah. Okay, you still on. had poor people. You still had people that were living in the hood. Okay. We didn't need somebody talking about their vagina mm -hmm. uh, in order to feel seen. So what you're doing is you're setting the stage for younger girls who aspire to celebrities to say okay well if i mimic that behavior i too can become famous what you're actually doing is you're you're setting the idols facts and later in this episode candace owens even tells destiny hey go look up the lyrics to wap if you think people are just perpetuating the things that they see in their communities and that's a reflection in their music go look up the actual lyrics to wap destiny responds and says well yeah i've never looked up the lyrics but but i think i'm familiar with them because ben shapiro had a segment where he was rapping the lyrics see that's what i'm talking about not all white liberals but a lot of white liberals rely on other white people that they're comfortable with even if they fall on different sides of the political spectrum to inform them on other topics you're you clearly don't follow rap you clearly don't follow hip-hop you're not from the community bro i'm not saying you're not allowed to speak on it but at least come with some sort of lens or mindset to hear from the very people that's from that freaking community bro you don't know what you're talking about right and this is what i'm talking about you People like this, I, I, I want to ask the question so badly. White liberals, can black people do anything wrong? What's the answer to the question? You're going to say, well, of course they can. Okay, say it out loud. How come you never call it out loud? Because you don't want to be called racist. Wrong is wrong. You don't have to be from the black community to look at a Cardi B, to look at a Mac Thee Stallion and say, huh, isn't it coincidental that all your music is promiscuous, right? All your, your music is anti-God. All your music videos include extremely satanic imagery checkerboard flooring freemasonry occultic imagery that has nothing to do with the lip nothing to do with the lyrics but you never call that out it's like are all of you all surface level right i just don't understand this right here what do you all think about this i just wanted to make a video because i love that candace owens called this out i take pleasure in it hop in the comment section give me your thoughts man this just blows my mind. We all know what's going on, bro. The Freemasons, the people who are at the top, the elite, are pushing these and selecting these, these artists because they know what they're going to push. And even when, once those artists are in position, they don't have control over what they put out, right? That has to get approved. And if it's not degeneracy, if it's not promoting anti-God, it's not going to get pushed out, period. Oh, yeah. Diddy got a podcast.